Today we're talking balance tweaks, and that's probably music to your ears, isn't it? Yeah, I thought so. Thad Sasser, the lead multiplayer designer for Battlefield Hardline, took to the Battlelog forums on Wednesday and published a small list of tweaks and changes that might be making their way into the next patch. A lot of people have been crying out for changes, and a lot of them aren't convinced that the weapons that we currently have on offer within Hardline are balanced correctly. It does seem, however, that Visceral are keen on keeping the ethos of a low time to kill within Battlefield Hardline, which I think is great. The game needs its own identity, and I think a lot of people are expecting the balance to be similar to what we have in Battlefield 4, and that can't happen because Hardline has a much lower time to kill than what is currently present within Battlefield 4. They are two separate games, and I don't really think the balance should be compared between the two. It needs to have its own identity, Hardline, for it to be a game that people will want to play. But anyway, on with these changes. First up, the K-10 is taking a damage hit, down to a maximum of 33 instead of the normal 34. This change will eliminate the guaranteed 3-shot kill at close range for this weapon, and it extends that to 4 shots. This might not sound like a huge difference, as the weapon fires at a ridiculous 1200 RPM anyway, so this change is going to kind of extend the time to kill just a little bit, in close quarters, but I don't think it's barely going to make a difference. Number 2. Visceral are bringing the two DMRs that are available on the criminal faction up into line with what is present as the COP variant. Both the Sega and the PTR are having their recoil reduced. Now, not having played with the DMRs at all yet, actually, I can't really comment on this change. I don't really think I'm, I'm qualified to give an opinion on something that I've I've never used. So anyone out there who has happened to have used these DMRs, do you think the balance is okay at the moment, or is this a change you think people are going to welcome? Let me know in the comments. Both the HCAR and the HK-51 battle rifles are also having their recoil reduced, so they fall more in line with the SCAR-H and the SA-58. Once again, here, Visceral are addressing the issue that a few of the criminal weapons don't seem to be as good as some of the COP weapons, and I know a lot of players, especially on console, have been having issues controlling the recoil of the battle rifles, and, and heck, even on PC I've had trouble using those things. They are ridiculously difficult to use. To add to this, all battle rifles will have their minimum damage changed to 25, which means all weapons will now guarantee a four-shot kill at any range when the bullets are hitting the body or the upper torso. Of course, that's going to be reduced if you hit them in the head, and it's going to be elongated if you hit them in the legs or the arm. But just to be safe, if you're hitting somebody in the body or the upper torso, now with the battle rifles, if this change goes into the final patch, you will be seeing a four-shot kill for all of them. The 410 Jury, which is the handheld shotgun thing that's available to the Mechanic class, will be receiving a small buff too. The damage per pellet is going to go up slightly, which will increase its effectiveness every shot that you fire. The Jury, as I said, is that weird, like, funny mechanical pistol thing that fires shotgun pellets instead of your standard slugs that you would expect from a revolver. It's a little bit weird, it's kind of what you would think like the Shorty 12G from BF4. That thing was a secondary, but it but it was a shotgun. It's kind of what the jury's trying to be, but it still resembles a pistol. Both the FMG9 and the M45 PDWs available to the Mechanic class have had their maximum damage increased to 25, and they've had that damage drop-off range changed as well, where the maximum damage of the weapon will now extend longer into the distance, meaning that your weapon will be a little bit more effective at range. For the FMG9, I think this is really needed, because it's a syndicate weapon, and a syndicate weapon is supposed to be, well, I think, attractive to unlock, and if the weapon's not really worth it, as right now a lot of people don't really think it might be, apart from that really cool reload that it's got, then what's the point of you trying to really unlock it? It doesn't really achieve anything if it's not something that is going to be good once you get your hands on it. And finally, the AKM is going to have its minimum damage changed to 24 than what it currently sits at right now. 
and this removes the weapon's ability to guarantee a four-shot kill at any range, and it extends that to five. It's a slight nerf to what I think is a really, really good assault rifle right now. It has a lot of recoil, but if you can land your first few shots, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a kill. So right now, if they're going to drop the minimum damage, then I think that's going to help it balance out just a little bit more. So there you go, a small list of changes that should be coming to Hardline in the near future. Do you agree with all of them, or are there things out there that you think aren't actually needed? Or do you in fact think that more changes are needed to get the balance that you think should be in Hardline right now? I would have to say that the balance is a... Uh, is kind of like a, a divided topic. Some people think it should be changed and a lot of other people think that it's, it's kind of okay as it is. I'm on the fence. I openly think that the assault rifles are far too powerful. The M416 and the M16A3 are like laser cannons and you can take people out ridiculously fast at whatever range you care to shoot somebody at. And I also think that the Scout Elite, because it's got a 51 minimum damage, means you can do a one-shot headshot kill with that thing and it can fire at least one bullet in less than a second. So you're firing more than one bullet per second, which means you can fire more than 60 bullets in a minute. It's just ridiculous. The rate of fire is so high that, and its damage is fairly high, that you can drop people really, really quickly. And then when you look at weapons like the AWM and the R700, which are supposed to be heavy-hitting, slow-firing assault rifles, the Scout Elite outdoes it on both fronts, really, because it's not really balanced all that well. I mean, I don't know. There are weapons out there that I think are clearly not balanced right now, but a lot of other people think it's perfectly fine the way it is. And that's really up to the developers to decide what they actually do with it. All we can do is just give them our opinion. So if you've got one, leave it in the comments below. But that is the end of the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It feels good to be bringing you guys some news again. That's what a lot of you people actually subscribe to me for. I haven't really been able to do that during the release. So it feels good to go back to something that I really enjoy bringing to you guys and clearly you guys like hearing about. If you could leave me a rating, that'd be absolutely fantastic. And don't forget to check out g2a.com slash r slash westy for great deals on the latest games. And hit up my other sponsor too, Nitrado, for all your PC server needs. Links are in the description. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.